Right now we're looking at LineGraph Studio, which is an IDE for visualizing and debugging agents. So right here, you're seeing a visualization of a particular graph that I've been working on. This is a deep research agent that runs fully locally using LM Studio or Llama. And we're going to show two different tricks for debugging applications like this using LineGraph Studio. So the first will just show how to isolate errors to specific points in your graph and how to rerun your graph from that point once you've made code changes. And the second is setting what we call breakpoints to review and improve specific parts of your graph. Just to give some quick context, the repo that we're going to test here is this local deep researcher. And let's test the practical example of adding and debugging a new feature. Sometimes when you're running deep research, you just want to export the report to a markdown file and then move it to some other application like Obsidian. So let's go over the code. We'll start Studio and then I'll also show how I would develop and debug a feature like this using LineGraph Studio. So I'm in my repo now. Now let's say I want to add and debug this new feature. I just install the package, then make sure the LineGraph CLI is installed. Then you're running LineGraph Dev. This spins up LineGraph platform locally. It also opens Studio in your browser. And here we are looking at our graph. So all the nodes in this graph correspond to the node definitions in our graph.py. And here's the common workflow that I use when adding features. I open up cursor agent as an example, add the feature that I want. So I want to add a new node called save report. So while code agents are running, I'll always have studio open and you'll see why in a minute. We'll accept the file. I'll save it, close this down, go over to studio and we can see the graph is recompiled with our new node save report that we just created. Now let's try running it, pass in our input topic. As studio is running, we can see each node as it generates output. We're now doing web research after generating a query using our local model. We're summarizing sources now. We can see that stream, do some reflection, go back to web search, resummarize. So you see something interesting here. Our graph has hit an error, and this happens when you're doing development sometimes. There's a bug in your code. Now it's nice in Studio, and this is why I like to do this development process with Studio in concert with whatever ID I'm working with. It shows me exactly where my graph, specifically what node an error occurs, I see the error here. It's in this safe report, which is this new node we just added. I can always open the trace in Langsmith and see precisely where it occurred. It's in this final node. I can look at the full trace here as well. So I can look at my code here and I actually introduced this error on purpose. So the code agent actually didn't make a mistake, but I introduced this error to show you how this works. So the problem is that our state is actually a data class, not a dict. And the error indicates that as well. So what's really nice is I'm in the code now. Let's just say I update this. If I save this file, my graph automatically recompiles. I go back to Studio and you see this rerun from here. This allows me to run my graph from any particular node. So we've just made an update to the save report node and I can just run the graph from the prior node, which is finalized summary, which we see right here that ran fine. And I'll just rerun our save report node with the code change incorporated. So let's try that now. Say rerun from here. Perfect. So it ran and we can open up a run in Langsmith and we can see this is that second execution. It ran from the finalized summary node. So it only includes that final node that, in, that is just save report. We can look at it. We can see that it indeed ran and the report is output. We can look at our code and we can see that it's saved to this report directory and there's our report. Very nice. So the key point here is that when I'm doing development, I'll just have Studio running and I'll make code changes, save them. Studio automatically recompiles my graph and I can just rerun from any point in this graph that's been recompiled and saved to test things that were previously broken. As we just saw, we just reran save report after the code change, and we can see that node runs just fine. Now I want to show you a different workflow that I also use quite a bit. So let's say there's somewhere in your graph that does work, but you want to improve it. So as an example here, this summarize sources node actually runs an LLM locally to produce a summary of some retrieved web contents. So I can add an interrupt before or after any node in my graph. I'm going to add one after summarize sources. This is pretty nice because I may want to review the output of this node and maybe make changes. Let's open up a new thread. I still have my interrupt set after some of my sources, and I can go ahead and kick off my graph again. Go ahead and test. Again, my interrupt is set. Summarization is being done. And we can see our graph stops at the particular node. We can review our summary. We can look at it in Langsmith. We can look at the full trace, in fact, including the input instructions or system prompt, as well as the formatted context that we passed in for summarization. Now, something I often will do is I'll go to my prompts, and after review, I'll make some changes. Like I'll say here, start directly with the summary, no preamble or title. I've seen that issue quite a bit come up. I can further elaborate on the prompt. Cool. So I've updated my prompt. 
And just like we saw before, all we need to do is just rerun the graph from the prior node. In this case, it's this web research node, which is going to rerun summarized sources with the prompts that we just updated. So now we're rerunning. That's great. And we can see our instructions are updated here following what we just added to the system prompt. Then in our graph, we can say, OK, we're happy. And we go ahead and continue. Our graph proceeds. And now our graph finished. So I showed two different flows. They're a little bit different in some important ways. So the first flow is just simply running your graph. And the graph will expose to you any bugs or errors that are thrown at any point. You can easily isolate what node the bugs originate in. You can zoom into the traces to understand what's happening under the hood. You can make code changes. And you can rerun your graph from the prior node once you've made those changes or fixes to test and confirm that they worked. So that's kind of flow one we saw. And now flow two is a bit different. Like imagine in your graph, there's some node that you want to iterate on, that you know there's some irregularity. It may not throw an explicit error, but a class example here is prompting. Like you may want to iterate on a particular prompt within your graph, and it's very easy to set a breakpoint. So as we showed here, after a particular node, which will pause the graph, we can review the output, make changes to the prompt as an example, and just simply rerun that node and continue with that iterative process until we're happy. So both these flows are very common. I use them all the time. And the nice thing is LangGraph will continually recompile your graph for you. So I kind of have it just running in the background. Like as you can see here in cursor, it's just running and I'm using code agent or other things. I use Windsurf as well. I use Cloud Code all to modify my graph. So these things actually all play really nicely together. The various code tools like cursor, Windsurf, Cloud Code and Studio to visualize your graph, to pause at specific points, set it by setting breakpoints, to inspect the state of your graph, and to easily access LangSmith for further tracing and debugging. So hopefully this is useful, and this just shows kind of how I typically will use these various code tools in concert with LangGraph Studio and LangSmith. So feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Thanks.